Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. I'm Nick. Today, I'm talking about five perfect 10 out of 10 albums. There's a bunch of links down below for you to check out. There's links for The Vinyl Den Facebook group, for the merch page, for the Spotify and Apple Music weekly playlist that we put together, and also the Patreon page. So make sure you go check all that out. Of course, if you enjoy the episode, make sure you give me the old thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I release new episodes. So this actually just came up recently on the uh, Vinyl Den Facebook group where we are talking about uh, perfect 10 out of 10 albums because I don't think, at least in my opinion, they're not all that rare. Some people had differing opinions. Some people found a bunch of albums that were released just last year that are perfect 10 out of 10. For me, if I look at an album and it's not a perfect 10 out of 10. It doesn't mean it's a bad album. It doesn't mean that those tracks that I would, you know, pick are, are, are skippable tracks or, you know, tracks that aren't all that great. Sometimes there's just tracks that, you know, break up the flow of an album a little too much or don't really fit on an album or might have been perfect on the album before or the album after, you know. So just uh, track listing is, is really kind of big to me. So when I look at an album and listen to an album, and let's do it from beginning to end. I want to hear on a perfect 10 out of 10 album where every tra every song is perfect, every song is great, and every song fits in the correct place on the album. So, like I said, if an, if I rate an album maybe an 8 out of 10, that doesn't mean those couple of tracks are bad tracks. Maybe they're just out of place on the album. And maybe that's just me being crazy, I guess, but I don't know. Uh, uh, I just, over the years, I just there's not a lot of albums I would classify as a perfect 10 out of 10, but I got five long to talk about today. The first one here is an album that it is my hands down favorite album of all time, but it wasn't always that way. The, the album is dark side of the moon. This is actually the, uh, the 30th anniversary pressing of it. But, uh, for the, for the longest time, I was actually a little more of a fan of the wall. I grew up watching the wall, listening to the wall. It's a great album. And I'd say within the last uh, 10 years is probably, the dark when the when the dark side of the moon really kind of crept up into that number one spot. It's an album that from beginning to end, absolutely beautiful. Even though there's a couple of instrument instrumental tracks on there that some people aren't huge fans of, um, you know, they work with the album. They work within what Pink Floyd was trying to do with this album. So if you take like a track like On the Run, which you know might not be everyone's kind of cup of tea when it comes to you know Pink Floyd music. It's definitely a little. It, it's different than a say a traditional song is. It, like I said, it fits within the album. It fits within the the overarching theme of what Pink Floyd w was trying to portray with uh, Dark Side of the Moon. The second album is one that uh, I would probably classify this from around the age of twelve to probably 16, 17, 18, as probably, over those years, is probably my favorite album of all time for, for that period. And the album is Paranoid by by Black Sabbath. This is an album that I grew up listening to. I uh, my, my dad had this on vinyl. And uh, when I was younger, probably around 10, 11, 12, I was given his record collection. And, I mean, I would sit in my room and listen to this album non-stop over and over again and just be in complete awe of how incredible this album is but the funny thing is like everyone like always looks at the artwork on here and they're like how is that what what is the album artwork supposed to mean on here uh you know the album is called paranoid but the, actually the the album was supposed to be called war pigs which is a fantastic album uh, i'm sorry a fantastic song probably one of my favorite songs on this album and uh so the that was supposed to be to go along with that war pigs theme and then the band and label, once they recorded Paranoid, thought the Paranoid was a better way to go with the like the the lead single for the album and the album uh, name. So that's why it ended up being called Paranoid. And they didn't really change the artwork on there. But uh, yeah, I've always got a chuckle out of some of the uh, you know some of the ways that people describe the album cover meaning you know, with uh, with the title of the album. When the next album was released back in 1993, I was like, I don't remember what, when it was released in 93. So I was like uh, 13, 14 years old around that time. And uh, I was a huge fan of this band already. And this album came out and I was absolutely blown away by how incredible this album was. You know, and even, you know, 30 years later, it's still a rev relevant album. There's a lot of the themes they discussed on this album are still 
you know, relevant today in, in 2023. Uh, just a fantastic album. The album is Versus by Pearl Jam. I, uh, w- when 10 hit and dropped, you know, I was, uh, at that time, I was, I, I was definitely a Nirvana fan. And then I listened to 10 and, like, I was really kind of blown away by how different Pearl Jam was, was taken. That uh, even though I don't, I don't consider Pearl Jam a grunge band, but 10 is a grunge album. So what they were doing with grunge was very different than what I listened to with uh, with Bleach and with Nevermind, and uh, you know I was instantly hooked w- with Pearl Jam there. And then, like I said, I, they dropped verses, and it's just an incredible album. You know, there are so many different things in this album, and some of the very adult themes on some of these songs that, uh, like I said, are still issues today. You know, thirty years later, and, and are still very relevant. But uh, like I said, beginning and Perfect track placement, perfect songs. It's just an incredible album. So the first three albums I talked about were all kind of very mainstream albums. Dark Side of the Moon, Paranoid. You know, other albums, uh, these these are all albums that a lot of other people probably classify, you know, as being 10 out of 10 albums. But the last two, I tried to kind of go a little outside of the box with and uh, maybe go a little bit more modern uh, you know, than, you know, 30 years ago. So this this next album is one that uh, was released back in 1998. That's the band's debut album. And uh, you guys know me. I'm a big punk guy. I have been since I was like, I don't know, 14, 15 years old. And uh, punk has long been one of my, not my, not one of. It's definitely been my, my favorite genre. I love this album. And this is an album that over the course of the last, you know, 25 years, is probably one of my most played albums. And uh, the album is Do or Die. It's a debut album by uh, the Dropkick Murphys. If you're a, a fan of punk rock, a fan of uh, of really kind of rock in general, you know, you'll probably like this album if you haven't heard it before. I know a lot of people that aren't punk fans that love this album. It just, like I said, from beginning to end, it's an album you can put on. Uh, it opens with Cadence to Arms, a great, uh, a great bagpipe song. Fantastic album, fantastic uh, band. And then the last one on my list, it's the most recent album uh, on here. It was released back in 2007. It's the band's uh, second album. And uh, it's one that I actually did never really listen to until probably within the last two years. I finally gave this band a shot. And the uh, the album is I Empire by Angels and Airwaves. Like I said with the with the previous album, I'm, I'm a big punk guy, huge, you know, uh, I'm a huge Blink-182 uh, Blink fan. And uh, have been a fan of theirs since like 97, 98. So when when Tom DeLonge started Angels and Airwaves, I I liked, their first album was okay. And I never really got into anything after that. And then uh, I think it was during like the pandemic. I was like out shopping one day and, uh, and, and just happened to have on just a random playlist. And a couple of tracks from this album came up and I was instantly hooked on it. And uh, I had to have it, have, you know, I bought, uh, I, I went online and bought it on vinyl and ordered the CD. And uh, it, it's an album that, it's definitely Angels and Airwaves' best album. And if I were to rank this and compare it to, you know, some of the best stuff from Blink-182, I'd probably have it close to the top. It's probably not better than, say, like Enema of the State. You know, but I think it's definitely in the top five of, of, of anything that uh, you know any of the band members from Blink-182 have done. Well, that's all I got for you today, guys. Thanks for checking the show out. Like I said, I tried to kind of mix it up with those last couple of ones. I didn't want to do, you know, say I wasn't going to pick, uh, you know, Thriller or, uh, you know, Appetite for Destruction. The same things that a lot of other people would have. I tried to kind of go a little bit out of the box with a couple of those picks. But uh, drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. First off, like my, my main question is, is like a perfect 10 out of 10 album something that's really all that common to you? Because to me, like I said, it's a pretty rare thing. It's something that, uh, you know, I don't just go over quality of the track. A lot of times it could be, uh, you know, track placement. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm, something that's really big to me when I sit down and listen to an album is the overarching theme of, of the album. And if you got tracks that don't really fit a sequence, You know, that kind of knocks it down a little bit for me. But I don't know. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me the old thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. And that's all I got. Until next time, keep on spinning. Peace. Peace.